Lesson two, building better habits. Today, we're gonna to talk about building better habits. And the first thing I want to go over is this quote, long-term consistency needs short-term intensity. And this doesn't necessarily mean that short-term diets or programs are bad, but you do have to think about what happens afterwards. So yes, you might take some short-term progress, but when the diet is over, then what happens? Because diets that work via suffering and restriction fail when people no longer want to suffer or be restricted. That's almost always the case with short-term, go-hard or go-home style diets. So obviously the best nutrition approach you can take is the one that you can stick to long-term for a period of time. That's why we have our three nutrition rules, because they're flexible, they can fit into your preferences, your lifestyle and your individual tastes. And another good part about the nutrition rules is you don't have to be perfect. You just have to get better over time by gradually building better nutritional habits. Now, there will always be blips because getting results isn't a linear process, but over time, building better habits wins for long-term success and for maintenance of fat loss or muscle gain. So what is a habit? Well, a habit is a behavior that we put on autopilot and they're a vital part of us getting results. So let's go through the process of designing and implementing a new habit. First of all, a habit must be obvious. You have to easily understand how putting this habit into place will positively affect your goal. So studies have shown that the closer a habit links your goals, the more likely you are to follow through with it. And the more complicated or the harder it is for us to see the connection between the habit and our goals, the less likely we are to feel in control of it, and therefore the less likely we are to stick to it. So it's really important to make it simple and really obvious how the habit links to the goal that we're trying to achieve. Next, the habit needs to be frequent enough that it can become subconscious. This means that your new habit must be done ideally every day, or at least almost daily for this to happen. So trying to turn something like, mm, I'm gonna go and start swimming once a month into a habit is unlikely to happen. The habit must have a trigger. So by definition, habits are triggered by something in our environment. For example, you go into the bathroom in the morning, you see your toothbrush, you brush your teeth. So seeing your toothbrush, is the trigger. If you don't have a trigger, then you can't create a new habit. Now, a really easy to, way to create a trigger is to do what's called habit stacking. This means using an existing behavior or trigger to be the trigger for your new habit. So let's say that you want to stretch more. And also let's say that you're already in the habit of having a coffee every morning when you get up from your bed. So you could do something as simple as leaving a post-it note saying, stretch next to the kettle or coffee machine, and then stretch while the coffee boils. That way you can start to build a habit of stretching each morning by piggybacking on a habit that you already have and you do subconsciously, like having your coffee. Think of it this way, any new habit that piggybacks on an old one should be able to fit into this statement. Before or after current habit, I will new habit. So this example would be, after I put on a coffee machine in the morning, I will stretch for two minutes. So that's your trigger. The fourth point is the habit has to be achievable. So with any new habit, you must be 90 to 100% certain that you can achieve this new habit on a daily basis. Now you might feel fired up right now, motivated to make massive changes, but don't overshoot or set targets too high because when it comes to building better habits, it's actually more important to succeed than it is to go all out and try and be perfect straight away. If you're too optimistic, you might fail to implement the new habit frequently enough to turn it into a behavior that you can do on autopilot. So try and make it easy enough that it pretty much feels like it's impossible for you to fail. And the last point is it must be 100% under your control. This is really, really important. As an example, setting a new habit of getting eight hours sleep per night, that's not always under your control because you might not be able to fall asleep. There might be an alarm going off outside or you might have kids or something along those lines. There are things that you can't control, but you can control your sleep routine. So instead of aiming for getting eight hours sleep every night, aim to improve your sleep routine by not using your phone for 30 minutes before bed. They're the five steps for designing a new habit. The last part is to write this up into your habit statement. And you should do this every time you want to implement a new habit and the statement goes like this. I am 90 to 100% certain that I will then put your action, when put your trigger in order to achieve a certain outcome. 
So you've got the action, the new habit that you're going to implement. You've got the trigger, and that's when you're going to do it. And then you've got the outcome, the reasons why you're doing this habit and what goal it will help you achieve. So using our example from earlier, I am 90 to 100% certain that I will stretch when I put the coffee machine on in order to improve my flexibility. So that's how you're going to go about designing and implementing a new habit. If you need any help with this, or you're not sure what habit to pick and speak to your coach, they'll help you pick one that'll give you a good return on a small, simple behavior change.